on the road for 40 years, the Bay to Birdwood is one of the world's great historic motoring events. From its beginnings amongst enthusiasts, it's become embraced by the whole community. It's part of South Australia's culture. Started in 1980 as a, an event that was um, pulled together by a couple of entities, uh, Channel 7, SAS at the time, the Federation of Historic Motoring Vehicles of South Australia and the National Motor Museum all came together and created the event to celebrate the issuing of the first South Australian driver's license in 1906. That was the excuse that was used. It's just a great thing to get together. Adelaide and South Australia were such a natural fit to celebrate our automotive history. When the revolution began on our roads, the internal combustion engine replaced the horse and carriage, and Adelaide was at the forefront of building these high-tech vehicles. Sunday, September 28, 1980 is a day that all of Adelaide will remember for the staging of the inaugural Bay to Birdwood run. The Bay to Birdwood is more than just a run. It's a living art form as everyone taking part captures the mood of a bygone era. After the Second World War, Adelaide becomes a car manufacturer on a mass scale and more and more families are proudly owning their own vehicles. By the 1980s, the time is right to celebrate motoring history here and across the continents. From the mid 80s onwards, it really was a major event for South Australia. It was uh, generated these huge crowds, 150,000 or so, and it was a parade of historic motoring. It was quite exciting to watch. It, the, even for the entrance, it wasn't an elitist event. A lot of pretty uh, ordinary people, if I can put it that way, had old cars, um, and it was fun. It's a lot of people, a lot of people who were in that original group of organisers, people who've worked tirelessly for 40 years. Actually, even, you know, the entrants, they're all, they've all played a key role and it's a, a, a huge collective effort that has brought us to where we are. I think it's a well-known uh, fact now in Australia that South Australia has the greatest number of historic vehicles per capita. Bringing people out like Michael Parkinson in 84, I mean, the, the, that garnered lots of publicity and in world terms it was a, a reasonably big motoring event. Yeah well this is my wife Mary. Hello everyone, I'm very thrilled actually to be here in Adelaide. Did you enjoy it? Oh, absolutely fantastic. I've really never seen anything like it. You know, the minute you sort of came out of Glenelg, people waving, waving. and laughing and Cheering. all the way up. Oh, yeah, yeah, just, just brilliant. The winner of the 1984 Bay to Birdwood Run Concourse d'Elegance competition is entry number 25, a 1913 Empire Runabout, driven by V. Coupleditch. You know an event is successful when every Premier wants to be involved. I think this is probably one of the best in terms of conditions. Mm. Uh, you need cool so that <laughs> some of the cars don't boil over on the way up and uh, you need a lack of rain because, uh, as you can see, some of them have uh, very thin cover. Yeah, there's been surprisingly few breakdowns too, I think. Yeah. We had our hood down for the, for the uh, run, which was mm. terrific actually, quite exhilarating. You know, the wind in your hair at about... Uh, uh, what, 30k, mm. <laughs> 30 to 40k? Well, you're a veteran of these, uh, so to speak. Uh, does it surprise you how the event's grown in stature? Well, I, I think each year uh, you, you'd think, well, well, they pulled out all stops and we can't get much better. Certainly 1986, the uh, Jubilee one, uh, tremendous publicity and it was a special occasion. Uh, and yet here we are, 1988, and it's even bigger. Now people will say, well, that must be the bicentennial. But I'll bet 1990 we'll see them all out in force. I, uh, I drive up a 1948 Holden. Oh, great. 40, the actually, original. Yeah, 40 years old in uh, November, the car I drove up. Terrific. It didn't have uh, synchromesh on first gear, so uh, I missed first gear a couple of times. <laughs> My double to clutching, uh, I've lost, uh, got a bit rusty on it. So are you a car enthusiast, an old car enthusiast? Oh, yes. So before going into politics, we had a small business oh, in really? Kadena, and it was a motor vehicle business, so I've Oh, terrific. So, so you've grown up with cars. it. Oh, yeah. 
In the 80s, the beta birdwood is evolving into much more than a local event. It's become a national magnet and a major community attraction. By 86, it was uh, recognised as a major event. Um, they had both government support, as you suggested, with John Bannon there. A the television station was, was um, pushing it and it had become tremendously popular. Any car owner in Australia, old car owner, aspired to, to experience at least once. And many of them, once they'd been, um, came again and again and again, and there was a whole range of activities grew round at either or week either side. There were uh, runs and rallies and um, organised by different car clubs. This was different. This was sort of being part of a parade with people waving flags and cheering, um, meeting up with people, your friends, not just from your club, but from a whole range of makes and models and states. It rapidly became a popular event for interstate car owners. And owners of younger vehicles too. In the 90s, the citizen collectors of post-World War II vehicles were given their own day on the road to Birdwood. When they started the event, it was biennial. And then it changed in the late 90s to a, an annual event, but one year would be devoted to the veteran and vintage and um, uh, vehicles that were the older vehicles. And the classic year, which was in the odd year, was devoted to the more classic vehicles. Uh, another great event, uh, the 1996 Beta Birdwood Run. Biggest such event in the world. Now we're going to have an event every year. Uh, next year there'll be a classics event with cars after the Second World War. As it grows, it turns out that Adelaide is the place to hold the event for some special reasons. I, I think what makes it unique, even though the roads are more difficult than they were, it's still something you couldn't organise in any other state. Melbourne has tried. Did a rally a couple of years ago in Melbourne. You generally don't see people sitting on the side of the road. At the start and the finish was great, kind of like Bay to Birdwood, lots of people, but nothing between there and there. And to a degree lost in the traffic of Greater Melbourne. It sort of loses its focus and it loses the public attention. So people see you in an old car and they might wave and a few of them might have worked out that, oh, they're coming through here and they'll stop and watch you, but not to the same degree that you get in uh, Adelaide with the particularly long Anzac Highway and places like that where people were, you know, organised and they've got their chairs and <laughs> the whole nine yards. It's like a football match. Um, you just don't see that anywhere else. I don't believe there's many other cities I can think of that would actually be able to accommodate that kind of showing. I've always um, um, compared it to the fringe and how it closes down the city. You walk into anywhere within the city square and during fringe and you know the fringe is on. On the last Sunday of September in Adelaide, you definitely know the Beta Birdwood's on. Well, for some reason we just tend to love our vehicles, our old, our classics, our veterans, our vintage uh, vehicles, but it's the entrants themselves who want to keep doing it. South Australia has the largest proportion of historic vehicles than any other jurisdiction in, in Australia per capita. Now there's a couple of theories around that. One is climate. We are quite conducive to not rusting. You know it's a good climate for classic for, for preservation of vehicles and there's a lot of theory that the, the, the sort of the early Anglo-fied population of Australia sort of liked their British vehicles and so South Australia's got the Goldilocks city for running such an event. We still have, thanks to Colonel Light and the, the road system, a reasonably straight route from West Beach, Glenelg to Burwood. Um, and that is something that other Australian cities don't have. And what I think's best is that anywhere in the world you can go to car runs and see particular cars. But the Beta Burwood has this amazing parade of motoring history from the earliest days of motoring uh, to sort of relatively recent. And you see them not in a museum, but moving, travelling as cars did. Instead of coming to the museum to look at that collection, you had to be on the sides of the road to watch it go past you. And you don't get to see these objects, if we call them objects in the museum way, they're objects. You don't get to see these objects because they're in people's garages. Um, you might happen upon them doing a club run once every two months somewhere and you 
is you'll bump into them. But there's hardly any other place where you'll actually get to see the citizen collection on display. My greatest joy, I think, is hearing an entrant say, particularly an interstate entrant, uh, how blown away they are that the public of South Australia support this event as well as they do. They get the biggest thrill uh, driving that 72k route with the public of South Australia lining the streets, waving, tooting, having their champagne breakfasts and generally appreciating, I think, that these entrants have prepared their vehicles and want to be part of this historic parade. I think no other event anywhere in the world does the city embrace the event as well as what we do here at Adelaide. There are a lot of event, uh, events that celebrate fancy cars and events that are, um, you know, really historic. But this sort of brings together so many things. It brings together the historic motoring with that idea of the citizen collector. So it's not just about the fancy cars, it's about the ordinary cars that are meaningful to people, that, that hold their stories. Some of the earliest vehicles, 1904 I think is the oldest one we've got registered, right through to 1990. We do um, curate the event to ensure that there's not too many of the modern vehicles and there's a good showing of the veteran and vintage and older vehicles. So we can sort of um, control the kind of, cu by curating what comes into the event, but it's a good showcase of history, of motoring history. The, you know, one year, uh, a craze took part where a lot of the entrants bought little squeeze horns that were made from push bikes. And they'd all have them and, and toot them at the crowds and, and each, each other. <laughs> and that, there was that sort of engagement and, and excitement for both the participants and, and the crowds watching it. But as the event and the vehicles get older, there are challenges. The very early vehicles are finding it increasingly difficult. Not that the roads might be better, but they're getting very, very old. You've got century old vehicles now, and, and, and they, they were um, pretty primitive, and the metal's getting old, and, and, and that, that's challenging. Um, but the other thing was that the route was simpler in the 80s. There are now three times as many traffic lights with stops as there were in the early 80s. It's got harder over the years in the city side of it with all the traffic lights. And certainly when you talk to the guys who are running uh, vintage and veteran motorcycles, because they're a different thing again, when you come up to the lights with a motorcycle, you've got to disengage the clutch, do all these sort of things, slow right down to almost a stop, hope like heck that the light turned green and then you back onto it. But in many cases, if it doesn't, you've actually got to top off and sometimes you've got to run to the side at the start of the game. In terms of large numbers of old cars, um, travelling from Glenelg up to Birdwood, uh, that makes an amazing difference. Every time they stop, they've got to start again, we hope. I mean, it can be quite hard to, to drive an old car with a group of other old cars, um, accompanied by literally thousands of modern cars. That's one of the problems we have today. I mean, the enthusiasm is such that lots of modern cars accompany the, the old ones. And some of the drivers don't realise that your old car, although it has brakes, they don't necessarily work very well and never did. This isn't easy. This is 72 kilometres of, of windy hill roads and it's tough on the driver, it's tough on the vehicle, you know, it's these guys with motorcycles with clutches that burn out if they're sitting too long at, at, at um, traffic lights or we're moving too slowly and you're not getting your car overheats or there's too much pressure on the brakes. Lunchtime yesterday it was still in a million pieces. We threw a counterweight off the crankshaft and it did untold damage inside but we're keeping our fingers crossed that we'll make the distance today. You know, you go up through the Adelaide Hills and, and you go around the corner and you see somebody in their, their, um, in their vehicle and it's boiling over or a brake's on fire and it's, you know, you think, oh, you know, we're so lucky that's not us. So we feel really happy that that's not us. And we feel really sad because we know that that poor person, that, you know, this is the big day of the year for them. And, you know, they're not gonna make it this year. This is a challenge. And I reckon anybody who finishes that event 
uh, you know, it's, it's actually a great achievement. Of course, an important part of these motoring events internationally is the presentation of the vehicles. The Beta Birdwood has developed its own traditions, including the pronunciation of the award. The winner of the Jubilee Bay to Birdwood Run, Concours d'Elegance competition, uh, driving a 1909 Renault Roadster. Concours uh, d'Elegance is the ultimate uh, sort of best in show award. Um, so that's for the car that is the best example of itself, um, but it should look like it rolled out of the showroom, so showroom condition. For many years it was just about a start, a finish, a parade and awards um, for the Concorde Elegance. Um, we've tried at the finish to give more to the celebration, um, which has included fashions in the field. The um, attire of the occupants of the vehicles is a big part of the Beta Birdwood event. Um, you know, the spectacle of all the people dressed up in the era of their vehicles is just wonderful to watch. If you look out over the green, you can see all the people dressed up and, and everybody gets involved, the spectators, the entrance, the occupants. Uh, it's kind of like cosplay, I guess. So people actually rock up in period correct attire. Um, and I mean, to see the passion that some of these people put into finding just the right clothing. The fashions are, a, I stand in awe at what people do to present themselves on the day. Um, it does remind you, I suppose, of the, you know, the Melbourne Cup uh, fashions uh, on a smaller scale, of course, but to go back to those bygone eras um, of fashion, uh, the 10s, the 20s, the 30s, and so on, is, uh, is great for the entrance, but for the general public as well to see what you know what effort uh, they go to. When it comes to the concourse, it is very unique. I don't know another concourse that does this, where we actually have about 20 to 25 percent of the uh, points are actually awarded to the attire of the occupant. So that you know, obviously, they have to dress to the era of their vehicle. It's not about um, a dress up or a costume, it actually has to be the era of the vehicle. So if you've got a 1950s vehicle, it's not the idea is to dress up as Elvis or Marilyn Monroe, which we've had before. Um, it's about dressing in the era and unless Elvis owned that vehicle, you wouldn't be dressing up as Elvis. It really is about what they would wear when they went for a drive in their car in that year or the year of the vehicles and they go to great lengths the people in the concourse to make sure that they can prove that their whole attire down to the coins that they have in their pockets i've had people who have sourced the original matchboxes so they can show that it was in the era of the vehicle or they they will uh, source the original stockings or the seams down the back for the ladies so they really do go to a big length to make sure they looked the part for the day. Prior to this, this last year was my first ever Bay to Birdwood. I'd always been interested in it, but always as a spectator watching it from afar. I've been a lifelong car enthusiast, but I've never been one to have a show car to actually bring to an event to, for judging and concours. And winning it on my first attempt last year, I must say, it surprised the living daylights out of me. I, when I found out that I won, I was grinning from ear to ear because I kind of realised, oh my God, this is a big deal. <laughs> Which I kind of <laughs> only realised after the event, so. Everyone seems to know about the Concourse d'Elegance, but not a lot of people, are, they're still getting to know what the Preservation Award is all about. That's only been for the last few years. One of the most significant uh, things that normally happens on the day of the Beta Birdwood uh, is the judging of the award categories. So the event's always had a Concours d'Elegance, uh, and as of 2016, it's had a preservation award as well. And so that's basically when people put out the, it's the, it's the creme de la creme. So they put out their vehicles up for judging. There's a team of very specialized, very dedicated judges who score every single vehicle that comes through. And there's a lot of coordination work that goes on behind the scenes. So the preservation award is looking at the most original vehicle as possible. So we don't want to see um, a car that's had the paint respray. We don't want the new interior or the reupholstering um, done. Um, so we want it to be absolutely as original as possible and how it's been preserved um, over time. There have been notable changes amongst the drivers and owners too. 
It's certainly changed. It was a man's world, there's no doubt about it, um, when this event first started. And I think certainly a lot of the partners um, embraced it from the beginning. At the finish, especially when we have the spectators and the occupants and everyone there, I'm sure I wouldn't be too far wrong in saying that when I look out over the green where there's, you know, hundred thousands of people, um, that I would actually come to say that the demographic is probably 50-50. But what I've seen over the 20 years has been quite exciting because I've seen a change where it was always the males that owned the vehicles and the partners were came along. But I'm actually seeing more and more that we have females who own the vehicles and they're entering and it's been a big shift that I've seen over the, the 20 years. I think nowadays it's probably more accepted than when I first started out it was a, a little bit um, yeah you had to sort of define that you were a female car owner and it might have been just in the way cosmetics of the car I mean even in my El Camino I sort of put that pink number plaque just to say hey this is actually a female owned car there is more females in looking at cars you know whether it's because of their fathers or brothers or whatever mechanical side body work side um, or just you know that carry on down and want to just carry on that um, tradition of what their family had too. There are some fantastic females certainly in our club. We have uh, the, the, um, the chairman of our local branch here in South Australia, Barbara Pennington. And then there's a lot of support in the club for, for the girls, which is great. But the women are a very strong component of the club and, uh, and I see the same in the, the English branch as well. Those veterans aren't easy to drive um, and uh, it's specialised skills and I, and I really applaud that younger generation that have come through and particularly um, the females that have uh, embraced it as well and, and a lot of them have taken ownership as well of the vehicles. It almost skipped a generation with the veteran vintage owners that it's the grandchildren that are now taking on um, the mantle of grandma and grandpa. Several cars that have been through here where the father has now passed away and the son's got the car and they're bringing their grandson up for the Bay to Birdwood. So kids are a funny thing. They, they might enjoy it at sort of pre-10 and then after 10 when they're only teenagers, it's like, nah, I'm not going on that. And you kind of hope that eventually they'll come back and go, well, you know, now dad's getting too old or old and I'll go with dad on the car trip just to make sure he's safe and, and then eventually you hope that they actually start going, you know what, I remember enjoying this as a kid and now I enjoy it again, so I want to bring my kids. So then you start seeing three generations of one family in a car and you just hope that's going to keep ticking all over. It's just been one of those things that we've grown up with, you know, as a family when we were kids growing up, that we would often sit in front of the TV and watch it. Um, that passion has sort of grown up with me and it wasn't actually until that we bought our own um, then we thought you know we we could actually go in this this would be fun and it really was more just as a a fun thing just one of those things as a kid you go one day i want to have a car and drive in that in 1980 the first running of the bay to birdwood i can actually remember standing on the side of the road watching the vehicles go by and thinking to myself you know Wow, I'd love to be involved in that. It's such a fantastic event. Had you told me when I was a, a, a young lad standing on the side of the road that one day you'd be the chair of that, I'd have thought, oh, you know, died and gone to heaven, that'd be too good. Four decades on, the Bay to Birdwood continues to be an event loved by all, drivers, passengers and picnickers. It's Australia's iconic historic motoring event. It's part of our culture. There's nothing like it, you know, owning one of these things and bringing some history back to life and then parading and people coming out to watch you and look at all your work you've done. It's, um, it's, it's so attractive that I think people experiencing it will actually be the thing that will save the motoring history because they will want to own one of these vehicles. I just think it's got so much future now. We've, we've, we've evolved, we've grown, we've left the parent and we've, you know, the child's grown up and so it's very exciting to see where it's going to go in the future. The individual citizen collector are the people uh, who have the greater carriage uh, of, of our automotive cultural history and uh, we, we celebrate that. Look, I would like it to continue as it is as, and particularly as is this year where you've got 
the complete range of vehicles. One of the great things of the, the, the Bates Birdwood is the, the people who've organised it have actually expanded that community and got, got more and more people involved. And as a result, it hasn't burnt out, it hasn't lost its momentum. And that's one of the reasons for its 40 years of success. Yes, we know it's for historic motor vehicles and their owners, it's all about them, but it's so much more. It's about the public of South Australia. Uh, and so it's, it, it's inclusive. It's an event for all of us.